Today on Sam Tries, not cooking, but crafting. If you've been watching my channel lately and following my Instagram, you will know I am celebrating mermaid. And for mermaid, I will be using the mermaid handbook for the whole rest of the month. And today I'm going to try making a sea mist necklace. Ooh. To the craft supplies. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Going to make myself a necklace that feels like a sea mist. For this project, you're gonna need needle nose pliers, 12 and a half feet of 26 gauge silver wire. I assume any wire color would do, but they say silver. And I'm gonna go with silver too. A lobster claw clasp. Don't get pitched. Then the directions ask for a whole bunch of imitation pearls of various sizes. I'm just gonna use whatever beads speak to me. But in case you wanna follow the actual directions, here they are. Ding, 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 ding. There they are. It does say here though, beads up to two dozen or more in various sizes, colors as desired. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to use imitation pearls. They just recommend you use them. And I get it, they're very, very mermaidy. And then it says six to 10 large sequence palettes with holes in the colors of your choice. Again, we're not gonna use the sequence. We're just gonna use whatever beads come to me. So let's get started. First step is to cut five various lengths of 20 to 30 inches of your silver wire, leaving four inches for, you know, twisties and turnies. Somehow this turned into a tangled mess during that process. Second step is you're gonna take your pearls or sequins, or in my case, whatever beads you want, and loop them on your wire and make sure to double back on them so that they stay in place. Hopefully I understand how to do that. I think I figured out how to do this. So what you do is you take your pearl or in my case, my little amethyst bead because my mermaid costume is purple that I'm gonna wear at the mermaid parade and I would love to wear this with it. You put it on, when you found where you wanna go, you loop it, oh, stand still you little bugger. You loop it like this and you pull it back. Oops, I think I got a little crank. We'll see how it works out. Oh no, there we go, did it, see? And then it holds it for you. Time for the second thread. it so far. I did find some fake pearls to put on from an old necklace that I'm recycling <laughs> and I put on a shell. Ooh, time for the third. Third one's done. Ooh, good, this one will be a little longer. I also found some charms to add, like coins. Cause you know, maybe this mermaid found pirate treasure. Right Knuckles? Time for string four. Fourth 
one's done. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now it's to the last one. Number five. I think this is my longest one yet. snapped the wire as I was pulling it through this last one. <laughs> May still be like savable as a top. Yeah, I think it'll be okay for a top. Whoops, this wire is very delicate. Warning. <laughs> I don't know if this is enough to add to another one. Let's see how long it is. No, cause it's gonna be about the same as the other. Okay, <laughs> guess I'll just use these for my earrings at some point. Just for reference of how long it took me to string those five things, I got to hear in The Little Mermaid. Step three, according to the Mermaid Handbook, is gather the wires together on one side and divide them up into three sections. Then braid the ends together into two inch braids. Because you only have five wires, one strand of the braid will only be a single wire and the other two will, you know, be two. So one and two, two, okay? And braid. Let's give it a shot. And that's only one strand. That's only one side. They do have what it's kind of supposed to look like, I think, which is that. Wish me luck. It's not the best braid, but you know what, it's done. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna thread the lobster clasp closure through the loose wires and slide it down to the top of the braid, fold the loose wire and wrap around the braid. Okay, I think I can handle this. I did it. <laughs> it is done. Step five is to gather the other end of the necklace and repeat the braiding process. Oof. And then fold the braid to form a loop and then wrap the wires around that loop. So you're essentially creating the clasp for the lobster hook or the loop for the lobster clasp. Now the very last step please ignore the sound of the ocean shout in the background, <laughs> is to create the effect of silvery swirls of whirling waves. Wrap a few sections of the wire around the pillars to form swirls randomly throughout the necklace wire. And you can kind of see, it's supposed to be kind of like that. Let's give it a shot. honest I wasn't so sure about adding the loopies to it to make the wave effect but I really like it it adds a little something to it okay let's see the final product okay moment of truth Ooh, I like it it jingles it jingles <laughs> this will be like perfect with my mermaid costume for the mermaid parade here in Coney I love it I would give the Sea Mist Necklace from this mermaid handbook a 10 out of 10 for crafting. Ah! It wasn't too horribly difficult to make and I love the end result. Although I am a jewelry maker, so my terms of easy probably aren't relative to someone who's never crafted ever before. So please keep that in mind. But I love this. Definitely a 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this miraculous episode, be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to tune into my Insta for more mermaid fun throughout the month of May. And for those new subscribers who came just because I've been cooking from the Avatar cookbook, do not worry, I will cook again from that cookbook starting in June. I will see you next time for more of the Mermaid Handbook.